In this video, I want to review using Hamming codes for error correction and detection. First, let's look at the concept of parity. In parity, we take binary data, such as this, and we add an additional bit at the end that reflects how many ones or zeros there are in the data. In the idea of even parity, you count up the number of ones. So in this case, there's one, two, three, four ones which is an even number, and the parity we bit we add is going to be zero to maintain that number of ones. If the number of ones were not even to begin with, in this case there are three ones, then the parity bit we add is going to be a one to make the number of ones be even, in this case four. Now Hamming codes use the idea of parity, but use multiple parity bits to protect multiple pieces of data. So let's see how that works. And again, that last one was an example of even parity because we wanted the number to be even. There's also odd parity, and it works the same way. Now, in Hamming codes, you might have some data bits. Let's write them out. So, for example, 1, 0, 0, 0. And I'm going to label these data bits as data 1, data 2, data 3, and data 4. To construct the Hamming code, one way to do this you can you can use overlapping circles to visualize it. The computer program might do that, but it, it helps us understand how it works. So I'm going to make a couple big circles here. <clears throat> and we're going to put the data and the parity bits inside the circles. So I'm going to start off with data bit. Let's use a black marker for this. Data 1, data 2, data 3, and data 4. I'm going to copy the values in here. So data 1 is a 1, data 2 is a 0, data 3 is a 0, data 4 is a 0. Now I'm going to have parity bit 1, parity bit 2, and parity bit 3 <clears throat> in the circles. Notice each parity bit is going to only look at the data bits inside its circle. So parity bit 1 is going to look at these three data bits. Parity bit 2 is going to look at these three data bits. And parity bit 3 is going to look at these three data bits. They don't all look at all the data bits, but they all look at multiple ones, three of them each. So we need to figure out for even parity what parity bits to set in each one of these circles. Well, for parity bit 1, there's a 1, 0, 0. So there's 1, 1, and we're doing even parity, so I need another one to make two ones. So I'm going to add parity bit 1 up here. Parity bit 2 has three zeros it's looking at. Those are the bits inside the circle. <coughs> 0 is an even number, so I'm going to add a 0 parity bit here to keep it an even number. And parity bit 3 looks at these three uh, data bits, and there's a 1, 1 in there. We need to make that the number of 1's even, so I'm going to add a 1 as a parity bit. Now there are two 1's in that circle. All right, so we've actually constructed the Hamming code for those four data bits, and the overall number you might send would be these four plus these three parity bits. Now let's say during transmission something happened and one of the bits changed, so an error happened, and of course it can only be a 0 or 1, so for it to change it has to change from whatever it was to something different. Let's, let's change this data bit here. It was a 0, and now I'm going to make it a 1. So this is where the error happened, right there, on that data bit. Can we detect it when we receive this message on the receiving side? So when you get your new information, you can also imagine putting this back in the circle. And now we're going to check the parities for each one of those circles to see if they're correct. So in this case, parity bit 1 still looks at data bit 1, 0, 0. There is 1, 1 there and 1, 1 for the parity bit, which is 2. So that even parity is true for that, that circle. Now we're going to look at parity bit 2. And there's a 1, 0, 0, and a 0. That's an odd number of 1s. There's 1, 1, so that's odd. So this parity bit is not correct. There's something wrong in one of the 
things in the circle. This one was correct, so I'm going to put a check mark there. I'm going to go to the third parity bit, and just because something's wrong here, we don't know which, where it's wrong. It could be any of those any of those bits could have changed. Parity bit three, we're going to look at one zero one one. So there's a one 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 three ones. That's an odd number. So this one is incorrect. Now we look for where the incorrect ones overlap, but not overlap with a good one. So because P1 is good, all these bits here are good. Because this one's bad and this one's bad, and the place they overlap is here and here, this is the only one that overlaps with the bad, two bad ones, but doesn't overlap with a good one. So we've actually detected that the error here has happened in data bit three. Let's do this one more time, change that back to where it's supposed to go. So maybe we'll fix that one, right? And we'll make a different error this time and see if we can detect where it happened. In this case, I'm going to change the one in the middle to a one. And let's check all our parity bits. Now the parity bit here, one, two, three ones, supposed to be even. That's incorrect. This one here, parity bit two, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one. This one's incorrect. And Parity bit three, one, 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 three ones. That's incorrect. That's an odd number. So that one's wrong. So where do the bad ones all overlap? Well, the only place where the parity bit for all three of the uh, for all the locations here overlap is here in the middle, and that is the one that changed. So we know we have to shift that back to a zero. So the basic idea is you start with your data, distribute the data in the middle of these overlapping circles, compute what the parity bits should be for each of the data bits inside the circles, and then you can tell what happens when something changes as it gets transmitted. So give that a try yourself and see if you can use the Hamming codes to detect and correct errors in binary data transmission.